You're gonna cut this somehow, right? <laughs> I think the Kingwin impacts and influences the esports market on different levels. If you look at what, what Victor is doing with the business and where he's taking things, then you of course have events like this, where we're just connecting people, we're helping to educate people. So that is definitely an influence on people that might want to learn about it. It's good for networking, so I can meet people that I, I knew before, so we can just you know, talk about things. Um, then obviously Team Kingwin, there's a company, Kingwin, that then you know, build a team, which is always like a good step and shows that Victor believes in the market and he's able to utilize all of his business units to make sure that this is successful. So I definitely think that there's multiple levels um, Kingwin is impacting and influencing esports. So how, how esports develops is a very good question because if you look at the esports industry, it's not an old industry. If we compare ourselves to traditional sports, which most people do, that existed for you know, so much time, whereas esports is fairly new. So what we see is we see a, a rapid pace of innovation. So we're developing the ecosystem pretty fast. I mean, just imagine there's like 15 years between people carrying the computers to refill stadiums. So I, it's hard to pinpoint specific innovations, but if you just look at the rapid pace that innovation and funds come in, um, it's going to be very interesting to see where esports goes to and how it develops. Um, I have a hard time making a judgment right now because we see so much new technology coming in, like VR, we see AR, um, we see everything that happens on blockchain. So there might be some, some really relevant and solid impacts on the industry, but it's very hard to make a call for me right now. I'm curious to see how it goes myself. So I mean, look at, look at Quake. Quake was released, I think, in 96. And if we look at Counter-Strike, um, the game that basically was released in 2000, right? We have 2018 now, so there's an 18-year span for Counter-Strike. But if you look at the game, it went through multiple iterations, you know, from, from CS 1.0, from all the betas, up to 1.6, up to CSGO, up to, you know, everything that kind of happened with the game. So if you look at these games, you know, it's hard to tell how long they're going to exist. It's hard to tell how it's going to develop over the next one and two years. I think what's going to have a major impact is the franchise league system we see, because with the NALCS being franchised, the Overwatch League now being franchised, that's going to bring stability to the ecosystem, and that will make it easier for sponsors to get in if we're able to deliver the right you know, KPIs and the right metrics for them and make them happy with what they invest in, obviously. So I think that 2018 is going to be more of a make or break year, especially when it comes to how the ecosystem is set up. Um, we see a lot of media rights, you know, a lot of discussions around that happening. We see Twitch buying the exclusive rights to, for Overwatch League for 90 million. We've seen Facebook now acquiring the, the rights to do ESL events and broadcast them. So there's a lot of movement right now. Um, hard to tell but a lot is going to happen in this year. Esports basically is an industry, and every industry has the triggers, there's the, the kind of you know, screws you have to turn in order to make the industry grow, and there's so much things you can do. Um, but if you understand the economics, I think it's, it's, really important, it's really important to understand the economics so that you can make judgments on where, where are things going. So with the Esports Observer, we analyze financial streams into the industry and within the industry to help people you know, predict what we think is going to happen. We, supply people with data so they can make their own judgments. But I feel it's really important to provide these, these independent sources and connect the dots between business and esports. Because you know, if we want to grow the ecosystem, we need to make sure that people who put in money at one point you know, need to get the return, they need to be happy with what they're seeing. And we, so I'd rather make the pie bigger than taking a large share of a smaller pie. So I think esports already won the future of entertainment because with the, with the increase of interest that we see right now, so for me, and I give an example, for me personally, esports is more Game of Thrones than football. It's more entertainment than it is sports. And with the increase of large events, with the increase of experiences, people want to experience things, right? So people go to a stadium because they can experience something with their friends, you know, they can have a beer. But it's a new form of entertainment that people naturally grow into. I think it's a generational thing. So I don't have kids yet, but my kids will most likely see me watch an esports tournament before they see me watch like a proper football match. So I think you know, it's inherently gonna happen that my kids are gonna grow up in a world where it has never been not normal. And that's how it's gonna just grow into the future.